Timeshare meetings aren't as bad as you think. I actually enjoyed mine. However, I will say it is not for everybody. And to see if it's worth booking a timeshare experience so you can take advantage of a cheap hotel stay, free points, and sometimes some of them have free gift cards. So here are the five stages of a timeshare meeting. With the first stage, sign in and wait. So in stage one, somewhere in the hotel, they'll have a dedicated area just for doing timeshare meetings. And in this area, it almost feels like there are more timeshare employees than there are hotel staff. But here to explain stage one with me is my good friend, Anthony Venture. How was your check-in experience? So, uh, I didn't realize, so, so I was able to finagle a little bit, and I was able to get like, so apparently there's a whole check-in process, you go on a computer screen and whatnot. I said we're friends, so we got, we're able to do it all together, and I think we're gonna do the meeting together as well, which means we're gonna shoot them down. Like anything that's trying to come at us, with, oh, it's good value, so there's no value. I'll buy a house, yep. I'll have one to spend. All right, well, we'll see you after everything's done. So the general gist of stage one is that you go into this area where you check in. When you're checking in, they'll have you do some sort of quiz. It's kind of like not that important of a quiz. It's just like, hey, do you like traveling? Where would you like to travel? How old are you? Stuff like that. Just like basic question. And then after you're done with the quiz, then you'll get these little necklace things. And they're all color coordinated so your timeshare advisor can find you. But that was stage one. Nothing too scary, nothing too complicated. Now stage two. This is where you're going to worry a little bit, but not too much. You're going to meet with your timeshare advisor, then they're going to take you into this room. It's a presentation room, almost like just, you know, a PowerPoint show. And there'll be one guy guiding the whole presentation. And this guy, I'm pretty sure, isn't working on any commission, so he has no motivation to actually sell you. He's basically just the hype man for the advisors. And in this stage, stage two, this is basically just a general overview. The whole purpose of it is to explain what they're offering to you and why it's a good decision and so cool but it's not really targeted towards you so it's not that you know emotionally bounding it's kind of a joke basically they're like hey where do you want to travel well that's going to be expensive right well if you do this plan then it's going to be inflation proof or something like that oh you like visiting hawaii how about staying at a nice hawaii property then they're going to say that hilton the place that we did our timeshare at there's a big company that they don't need to sell timeshares that timeshares are actually benefiting you because they help you own a piece of the property is kind of strange, but honestly, pretty easy to ignore. Then they'll go into a little bit more specifics and explain how the point system works, how you sort of own everything. Honestly, even for me, it was quite confusing. But not only do they try to trick you that you're owning the property or something like that, they'll also put celebrity endorsements. I, there was this some guy that I don't know if he's famous or not famous. I've never seen him before, but he's like some sort of like actor or something. He was selling the timeshares as like a good option, you know, to try and sell you. And if that sales tactic works on you, I would recommend not attending a timeshare meeting at all. But I think this next part is the worst part in the stage. Basically, the presenter will try to tug at your heartstrings. Our presenter has some sort of story about someone close to him passing away and that they didn't give him a chance to vacation around the world and just enjoy life, right? And then he showed us pictures of his family and that he travels around the world and he stays at all these nice properties. I would just put it in the back of your mind that they're lying. Even if they aren't lying, they're telling these stories just to get you to buy something that is basically worthless based on you know other reviews of it i mean if you really want a timeshare there's a bunch of websites of people selling their own personal timeshares for zero dollars but yeah that was basically stage two just a general overview of the timeshare experience now the third stage this is going to be the most difficult stage that you'll have to get past basically after the presentation you'll exit the room and then your timeshare advisor will come and find you when they meet it with you they make this very clear do you need to take any bathroom breaks and the reason is it's easier to sell somebody if they don't leave. However, I would make sure to take advantage of that bathroom break because it also benefits you as well because your bodily functions won't cloud your judgment. Then after your bathroom break, your timeshare advisor will ask you a lot more personal questions like, oh, where you always wanted to go? Oh, where do you live? Do you have any siblings? Do you have any family? Just to try to get more personal with you because they'll use those personal things in the one-on-one -on -one meeting to really just tug at your heart. Oh, in this stage, it's probably going to be the longest time in the whole timeshare experience. 
Basically, the timeshare advisor will take you into another room with a personal desk that they have. They'll sit on one side and you'll sit on the other. In our timeshare experience, in the desk was a giant computer. It was basically filled with a bunch of information, brochures, pamphlets, but mainly in this giant computer desk was a calculator to see whether or not the timeshare was worth it to you. And she really did try to sell us on a timeshare, but one thing that killed her was when she asked, how much do you spend a night on a hotel? I told her, oh, usually I only spend about 80 bucks. And she also asked, how many times do I vacation? I'm like, oh, only five days a year because, you know, my work is so restrictive and they won't let me take vacation days. Just, you know, lies but realistic lies. And no matter what she did, she could not get the numbers to make sense for my situation. She's like, there's no hotels that you can book for $80. Let's up it to $150 a night. And I'm like, whoa, that's quite expensive for a hotel. And then she asked me questions on like, where do you book these hotels? I'm like, oh, the hotels in the Midwest and Ohio, there, you can find them for 80 bucks. And she's like, oh, I don't know. Because when we did the timeshare, it was in Las Vegas. So she only really knew what was going on on the West Coast. She she also tried to sell us on timeshare packages that if we were to vacation 120 days out of the 365 days a year, basically two thirds of the year, that didn't make any sense. Even if I didn't lie to her, you know, most workplaces only give you a two weeks vacation. How am I going to use 220 days out of 365 days a year? And they don't roll over. According to them, if you want to roll over your stays into the next year, then you have to pay some sort of like fee or something like that. Unless someone is retired, which I think is the main target of these timeshare presentations. But yeah, she basically kept saying that the points are inflation proof, that you can use these points to book uh, hotels all over the world. She even went as far as the saying that you can use these points to buy things on Amazon and to even buy airplane tickets. The whole meeting was just kind of confusing and I kept asking questions after questions until she basically gave up on us. She even went as far to sell us on the timeshares by calling us robots and slaves. Kind of crazy. And at this point, she seemed like she was just frustrated at us which leads us into the fourth stage. Now in the fourth stage, you're still dealing with your timeshare advisor, except now it seems like the timeshare advisor goes and grabs somebody. I think it's their manager or someone a little bit higher up. And this person is way more aggressive of a salesperson. They didn't really pull on our heartstrings because they didn't really get to know us. But yeah, she was basically like, oh, okay, we understand that you don't want to buy a timeshare. Why not try the rental period? And then after your rentals is over, then you can decide whether or not to buy a timeshare. Seemed like a pretty reasonable negotiation that you're not spending as much and you're not stuck with it for life. What's to lose? But as you know, timeshares, whether they're expensive or cheap, they're a scam. Just keep saying no, no, no. And when you keep saying no to the second person the timeshare advisor brought in, they'll eventually leave you alone. So the second person left and they brought the third and final person that you'll talk to in a timeshare meeting. And in our meeting, when they brought the third and final person, our timeshare advisor just left. I assume they were just moving on to the next person. And the third and final person was even shorter than the second person. They were basically like, here's a bunch of timeshare properties. We can give you a good deal if you want to stay at any of them. Basically book another timeshare without the timeshare meeting I'm assuming and they weren't bad deals like you could stay in DC for $500 for the whole week so that was actually a pretty good deal and there were other properties with pretty good deals and honestly if I had any intention of vacationing in those spots I probably would have taken them up on it just make sure if this happens to you make sure that they're selling you another vacation and not a timeshare and then the fifth and final stage basically this was the easiest stage after the third person gives up on you it was only like a minute two minutes so it's not that long of a time that they actually give up on you. They'll basically say, all right, well, have a good day. If you want to collect your points, then go up to the counter there. Easy enough. And it was that easy. After we were done, we got up. Then we walked over to another counter to talk to like a secretary to get our points. They asked what our name was. They brought out a binder and next to our name, we just had to sign just to make sure that we were here. And while you're signing, they'll send you your gift. So our gift, me and Anthony's was Hilton points. And the person told us that it would show up in one to three days. Well, I actually showed up sooner than that. Maybe within 30 minutes, we got all of our points. Overall, the timeshare experience wasn't too bad. It only took about an hour and a half. And our timeshare meeting was only one day out of our four day stay. And out of that four day stay, we only paid $150, a pretty good deal to stay within the Vegas area. And after we checked out, even though we didn't buy a timeshare, they didn't charge us anything extra. I will say though, if any of the things I talked about in this video would influence you to buy something, I would stay 
far and clear away from timeshares. Timeshares are definitely a bad idea. I would just take advantage of them if you're not an easy sell. Basically, if a Best Buy employee can sell you on something, I would not attend a timeshare meeting. It's not worth it, no matter how you spin it. But yeah, I hope that shed a light on what to expect during a timeshare experience. As long as you can hold your will, I don't see any reason why you can't take advantage of the timeshare benefits. But that's my opinion, and I'll see you later.